Something that I actually forgot to do uh, a little bit earlier, I didn't know about this, but I just didn't notice the check command here, so I forgot to show it. If you interact with the Tanabata decorations, you can write a wish on the card here. And yeah, all of these are kind of great. You actually get a comment later in the week from Dojima, depending on what you are selected. Apparently his comment for world domination is pretty funny. And yet there's proof that you can have dreams about the fox, but it's completely pointless. Here it is. But that doesn't make sense, we saved Rise. I don't get it! I mean, we... Look, we're all meeting at Juness. Come over right away! Was there a second person in the TV? Another TV wall dungeon we didn't know existed at the time? Can there be two at once? This is gonna throw a lot of our assumptions out. went over to check out the scene. He should be back soon. <sighs> yeah, it was murder, all right. The body was hanging upside down on an apartment's rooftop railing. Which sounds pretty similar to the other cases. But how could that... That's not all. The victim this time... It was King Moron. King Moron? Someone killed our teacher. You mean that King Moron? Senpai's homeroom teacher? Wh why What on earth is going on here? How am I supposed to know? But I talked to a guy there who saw it. It's true. There's no mistake. Gotta be shitting me. 
Ain't the killer targeting people who get shown on TV? Yeah, even Kanji's figured that out. He was never on the news. I ain't never seen King Moron on the Midnight Channel or any other programs. Why? Why did this happen? I thought we finally figured some things out. Were they all just a big coincidence? Or did we have things wrong the whole time? Maybe we have to reevaluate things. Maybe the Midnight Channel doesn't have anything to do with this. It did line up with the cases like five times in a row. Damn it. We came so far and now we're back to square one. Were we in over our heads trying to catch a culprit that even the police couldn't find? Damn straight. We started this thing because the police can't tell their asses from their elbows. We give up now and that shithead's going to be on the loose forever. This ain't the time for bitching and moaning. We just gotta keep on keeping on. Kanji kun. Huh. Big talk from someone like you, Kanji. What what's that supposed to mean? Uh, I know. We're dealing with a murderer here, but we've all risked our lives to get this far. No way we'll back down. And we promised the bear, too. Hey, that's right! Maybe Teddy knows something about this! Well, since moping around won't do us any good, let's go see him. Huh? There's staff here? Don't tell me they've found out about our TV. Now that's unusual. Hi there. Did something happen? Or are you just standing there flailing your arms about for no reason? Ah, Yosuke-kun. Great timing. Did the manager tell you anything about this? There's been this weird mascot around our department for quite a while now. Is there some kind of campaign on today? Mascot? He said his name was, uh, what was it? Terry? Eddie? Well, there are no customers around, so I guess it's fine. I better get back to my station. Please don't tell me. Ah, this really hits the spot. This is probably not the right thing to focus on right now, but this whole time there were massage chairs right across from the TV we kept entering. What the? I mean, how'd you? It took you guys long enough. I've been waiting. Teddy, are you okay on this side? How did you even leave your side? Of course I can come out. There's an exit. It just never occurred to me to do it before. But spending time with you all sparked my curiosity about this world. I did wonder if it was a good idea, but my feet started moving before I could decide. And when I thought about it, I had nowhere to go. And it was a waste to go back. So I waited here for you. And likely traumatize a few kids in the process. Oh, someone asked for my name. So I told them, I'm Teddy. And Japanese trivia time. In Japanese, he answered their question with Kumada, or I'm Kuma. And that caused everyone to think that his name was Kumada, which is an actual Japanese name. The English version didn't need to do that kind of leap since Teddy is already a legitimate name. So that's why. And if you're wondering about it being weird that it doesn't sound like a Japanese name, I'll get to that a bit later. Um, yeah, I, just the music abruptly cuts there, because we're going to talk about murder now. How long have you been here, Teddy? Did anyone enter the other world? I stayed until the fog settled in on my side, but no one came. You're positive. You really didn't sense a single person. I just said that I didn't. I was there all by myself, like always. <laughs> that means that King Moron was never in there either. And your nose wasn't clogged or anything? Aren't you listening? I was utterly, totally, and 100% alone! That's why I came over here! But I can understand if you don't believe me. My senses aren't that good lately anyways. Oh, 
Sensei's heart is radiating pure kindness. Well, it's true that the Midnight Channel was blank last night. And even before that, Teddy says he didn't sense anything, right? Does that mean King Moron was never on that side? <sighs> What's going on? Hey, hey, I want to go somewhere. Huh? Now ain't the time, dude. You seriously don't plan on going back, do you? Where do you want to go, anyway? I want to give this to Risei-chan. It's for her. Risei-chan will probably back us up from now on. So I'm going to fight alongside you with everything I got. And unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on um, what you like, that means no more It's Not Strong at All. Rip. Don't think of me as the same cute little teddy. I'm an all-new model. I have a powerful attack, an unbeatable defense, and a winning smile. Today begins the new legend of Teddy! Well, there's a spit-off name if I ever saw one. Wow, a new legend. I wasn't aware you even had an old legend. So yes, in addition to Risei joining the party, Teddy has become a full-fledged party member now. I'll get to his stance the next time we enter the TV. And a new member means a new rank for the full Arcana. Uh-oh, people are starting to stare. Keep it down, will you, Ted? Come on, let's go somewhere else. Okay, just to make sure, I'm gonna ask you one last time. Nobody was over there, except for you, until the fog came back, correct? That's what I've been saying. He didn't show up on the Midnight Channel, either. What's up with that? No clue. But I think we can be sure now that King Moron was never thrown into the TV. Then what? He was killed over here? Why not throw him into a TV like all the rest? Hmm... Not really sure, but maybe there was some reason that the killer couldn't do that. They couldn't? Well, they've done it a bunch of times already, but I guess everyone screws up sometimes. Maybe it's not in that sense. Maybe it's more the fact that... They had to kill him on very short notice, because he never showed up on the Midnight Channel. Maybe there just wasn't enough time to throw him in. Maybe the culprit thought he couldn't kill any more people by throwing them into TVs. Alternatively, this. I mean, we prevented his last three attempts in a row. Oh, I get you. That could be it. So they snuffed someone on our side this time to make sure it worked. Damn it. If that's true, then we have no way of preventing more murders unless we catch the killer. We need more clues. Here's the thing though, we had no indication that he was ever going to be targeted, unlike with everyone else so far in this case, so... There is something weird going on here. I wonder if Risei-chan's up and around yet. Yeah, we'll have to put our hopes on her. <sighs> it's so hot out. I'm taking this off. Wait, you're not talking about your head, are you? Cut it out! There's kids watching! Jeez, they'll be scarred for life if they see an empty mascot walking around. Have a little consideration, man. I'm glad you're back to normal, though. Your fur's all fuzzy again. Uh, can I... Can, can I feel it? No. Actually, I'm no longer a hollow bear. <laughs> I trained and trained, hoping to someday score with Chie-chan and Yuki-chan, and now I finally have an inside. Yeah, good job with that. Oh, come on, can't we give it a rest with the whole scoring thing? Dude, you're hollow. Taking your head off isn't going to cool you down. But I just told you, I'm not hollow anymore! It's too hot! I can't stand it! Uh, 
It's so hot! Oh! What the? Much better. No way! Now that hit the spot. I am a human teddy. I am your future. Hey, Chie chan, Yuki chan. Yes? Do you have anything to wear? I'm basically like a newborn at the moment. Oh, that makes it even worse. Teddy? Is that really you? <laughs> he has an auto generation for bishy sparkles. Wait, did you say you're like a newborn? Then don't don't take the bottom part off. You need some clothes, right? Come on, let's go look around. That's Teddy. And that kid there is still staring. He said he's not hollow anymore. So like. He grew himself a body in there? I mean, we knew that he'd resolve some issues and that he was going to find his true self along with the rest of us, but we didn't think that he'd, you know, actually make a new self. What kind of creature would do that? Well, we already knew Teddy was some weird thing that doesn't obey any of the normal laws of, well, anything. I mean, what is he? <sighs> then again... This is hardly the first bizarre thing we've seen. And I gotta admit, it's probably better than him walking around in his bear suit. Oh, hey, weren't we gonna see about talking to Rise? Yeah, this scene just kind of flits around to all sorts of different topics at once, doesn't it? I was so shocked that I lost track of what we were talking about. <laughs> Let's head over to Rise's place. As for Teddy, he's with the girls, so he should be fine. Yosuke, you have no idea how wrong that sentence sounds. Teddy is with the girl, so he should be fine. Uh, have you even met him? So yeah, human Teddy is a thing that exists. Mm -hmm. It's finally the season for Topsicles again. Oh right, and this, this thing, this is also kind of a... Some decks of the fandom latched onto this, but I guess I could talk about now that in the early days of Persona 4, Teddy's human form was considered a huge spoiler, but now just about every single spin-off reveals that as almost the first thing you know about Teddy. Dude, how many are you going to eat? You're gonna get a stomachache. Sorry we're late. How'd it take you that long to find clothes for Ted? Whoa. I is that you, Teddy? Oui, monsieur. How do I look? <laughs> Are you going to do that sparkle thing every time you open your mouth? Uh, don't encourage him. I think everyone here has already encouraged him. Also, I'm just looking at the katakana on that uh, thing there. It says ice cream. So, yeah, it actually is ice cream they're eating. The thing that I was going to mention about Teddy's name being not a Japanese sounding name and how that might make sense later, well, Teddy in his human form resembles a Japanese stereotype of Westerners with blonde hair and blue eyes, so him having a non-Japanese name is actually fitting. I have to say, it totally blew my mind, but he's Teddy, all right. This guy had to make it a huge ordeal. Everything was new to him, so it turned into a big mess. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that trying to dress someone who's never really had a concept of clothes before would be quite difficult. He was so excited in the women's section that he started blabbering. Also that. Hey, you can't just go around doing whatever you please when you're in this form. Got it? Well, he can't help it. It's his first time in our world. <sighs> All right. You don't need to get all mopey like that. I never said I won't forgive you. I'm so glad. I was worried that you didn't like me anymore. 
Oh, man. If you can behave yourself, you'll be pretty cute. Is he cute? What do you think, Kanji? Another one of my favorite Kanji lines of all time coming right up. Huh? What are you asking me for? Well, I was just wondering if he was your type. Oh, I get it. What you're really asking is, will you please beat the shit out of me, Kanji? <laughs> I love that line. I love that line so much. <laughs> it ain't funny, Yukiko-senpai. Sorry. <laughs> You'll have to forgive Yukiko. She's helpless when she gets this way. Oh, please, everyone. Don't fight over me, baby. <laughs> Shut up! You picking a fight with me? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, well. Here, Kanji. Get whatever ice cream you want. Just share it with Teddy. We're gonna head for the tofu shop. Wait here until we get back. Wow, you're rich. Oh, right. You probably don't know that much about how money works, do you? I can't just take this from you. Think of it as a welcome back party for Teddy. I mean, a thousand yen's quite a lot in terms of ice cream. Just don't go around making a racket. Whoa, Yosuke, what's gotten into you? You're acting like a real senpai all of a sudden. Oh, I get it. You might say differently, but you're still nice to Teddy. I'm glad Yosuke's developing into such a mature adult. Someone who doesn't let trifles bother him. I get the feeling you're going somewhere with this. What? You're worrying me, Chie. Oh, it's about Teddy's clothes, that's all. We didn't have the money for them, so we charged the rest to you. And another great Aaron Fitzgerald line delivery there. Charge? What? You put it on my account? Ah, oh, what the hell, Chie? I never said you could do that. And the clothes he's wearing look pretty expensive, too. What else were we supposed to do? That stuff was expensive, even for Juness. Charging stuff to his account and insulting his business. You seriously charged it to me? Why would you do that? You know I just bought a motorcycle, I'm broke. So this line obviously was not in the original, which actually makes this scene even worse to some people. So, if you're already broke, a little more debt isn't going to make much of a difference. What? Come on, baby. Stop fighting over... Shut up! This is your fault, you know. <sighs> you listen here, Ted. You better take really, really, really good care of that. If you put even a single tear in it, I'll make your next set of clothes out of the bear hide you took off. Yo, Teddy. Don't let it get you down. Let's go get some topsicles. Let's go on ahead. I think they're going to be a while. And then Yosuke and Chie kept arguing until the sun went down. Ah, I had a feeling you'd come. Hey, Hat Kid shown up again. The other Hat Kid, I mean. You're... Are you here to ingratiate yourself with Risei Kujikawa now? That's a pretty complicated word. Jeez, why did the clerk even let them charge it to someone else? Huh? Wait... You're that guy we saw with Kanji. Precisely. I don't believe we've met since then. In fact, I don't believe I've ever introduced myself. My name is Naoto Shiragane. I'm investigating the multiple murders that have occurred here. So Shiragane literally means white metal. It's a pretty cool name, although I think it actually more refers to silver. Mind if I ask you a few questions on the subject? Hang on a minute, you're investigating the murders? Oh, okay, that explains why you were talking to Kanji so much before, and why you said you were quote-unquote interested in him. The latest victim, Kinshiro Muraoka. 
He was a teacher at the school you all attend, correct? So what? If you're gonna ask us if anyone had a grudge against him and had a motive, well, pretty much everyone at our school, so that's not gonna help. The public is focused on the fact that he is associated with the second victim's school. But in truth, that's irrelevant. What intrigues me is the inconsistency. This Moraoka has never appeared on television. So the police have already figured out that detail. What do you make of that? How are we supposed to know? Well, we'll leave it at that. For my part, I'd like to solve this case as quickly as possible. I'll be keeping an eye on you all. I'm guessing you're the new help that Adachi mentioned before. Well then, until we meet again. Who is that guy? It felt like he completely saw through us. He even knew about the TV thing. Oh, hi, Rise. Oh, hi. We were just talking about you. Well, kind of. Rise chan, are you okay now? Good, good. Are you all here to check up on me? Well, yeah. Oh, um, do you guys have a moment? There's something I want to tell you. Follow me. My grandma's taking care of the shop today. Huh? Sure, okay. She still sounds kind of down. But I guess she's just recovering. Yeah, I remember being at my house. When I came to, though, I was already in the other world. We didn't even need to ask you about that, and you're already telling us, so... Still not really that helpful. Nobody's seen their kidnapper. Ah, Still no real information on the killer. We met this weird kid named Naoto a second ago. Oh. He's come to the shop several times. He asked me a lot about the incident. I didn't tell him anything about the other world, though. I figured it'd be a waste of time. Actually, he asked me about you guys too, but I just made up some stuff. Like, they found me unconscious on the roof at Jeunesse. Well, I guess that's close enough to the truth. Except it was in the electronics department. Um, so... Hmm? What's up? Um... I really appreciate what you did for me. Thank you so much! I love you guys! Huh? Oh, you don't have to thank us. Dude, she's so cute! Man, it's finally hitting me that you're the real deal. You really are Lisette. Well, I know I sounded gloomy and all from stress, so I, I thought you might not like me that way. Do I sound weird? Oh. But I guess it sounds more natural this way to the public. I'm sorry. I've practically lost touch with what the normal me is like. <laughs> no need to apologize. Just do what comes naturally. I think everyone has multiple sides to them. You don't have to force yourself to decide on just one. <laughs> it sounds convincing when Yukiko says it. Huh? Uh, really? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad you're the first people I got to know here. Oh yeah, we almost forgot your present. The teddy glasses. We should probably explain what that means before we just randomly say, oh yeah, these are teddy glasses. Um, you don't have to take them, but... well... I mean, you'll be kind of blind in the TV world without them, and that's really bad for a navigator. Senpai, would you be struggling without my help? Well, you were the reason we were able to beat Shadow Teddy. I can help you in that world, right? With my power. So wouldn't it be better if I joined the team? Welcoming two people in one day. These are kind of like proof that you're one of us. I see. I do remember you all wearing glasses over there. It's kind of interesting that the art book talks about the glasses thing, 
they were like, okay, so characters with glasses are kind of cool, so what if we make everyone a glasses character? Thanks, Senpai. Now I'm part of the team, too. If I haven't said this before, I think Laura Bailey's performance as Risei is great. Like, she nails both her stressed self and her normal cheerful self, as well as Shadow Risei. Just all the sides of her she does. Laura Bailey's a fantastic voice actress. One reason why there are some people who prefer the English dub of this game, well, okay, I definitely prefer most of it to the Japanese version, but uh, the main reason is Risei. Risei's Japanese voice is very, very contentious. She's a pretty big name Japanese voice actress. Rie Kugimiya, that's it. She often gets typecast as Sundere's, but as Risei, she sounds very, very high-pitched and kind of, in my opinion, it makes her sound like a five-year-old. Yasugami High starting tomorrow. But I don't have any friends yet, so don't ignore me, alright? Oh, don't worry, we're not gonna ignore you at all. Your social link is amazing. I do owe you my life, so, you know. And by saying, leave it to me, we get a boost of courage. Wow, I didn't realize you were so cool, Senpai. This sure is a rough time to transfer here, though. The kidnappings, King Moron's death, all that and exams are soon too. Oh, exams. Now I'm depressing myself. I wonder if there's any chance they'll be cancelled. I doubt it. They always hold exams, rain or shine. <laughs> I almost got killed by those monsters. Compared to that, exams are nothing. Your attitude's amazing. Alrighty then. Let's discuss the case some more tomorrow at our special headquarters. Yo, how's it going? Dude, Teddy ate five topsicles. Though if you count the ones I had before, that makes six. So I still win. No one asked. We're all done talking already. Let's go, senpai. Uh, when did you get so chipper? When you became part of one of my favorite ships. Do you go to Yasugami like Senpai? I'll be starting school there tomorrow, so I hope we get along too. Kanji and Risei are going to be in the same year. She's one of the younger members of the group. Huh? Oh. Cool. Uh, what grade are you in? Oh, I, I just kind of jumped the gun there. <laughs> so where's Teddy? He's over there, finishing up his fifth Topsicle. What are we gonna do with him? Well... I guess I'll take him home. That's gonna be weird to explain to Yosuke's parents, isn't it? Good evening. This is Nightline News. Our top story for the night concerns the latest developments in an ongoing story. The serial murder case in Inaba has claimed a third victim. The news shocked local residents, who have not seen another murder in three months, and assumed the spree had reached its end. Well, there would have been even more if we weren't involved in this. The deceased taught at a local high school. Since his body was found arranged in a similar manner as the last two victims, What's wrong? Was it... someone you know? Yeah, it was. He died? I'm alright. This marks the second consecutive death after Miss Saki Konishi's where the target was involved with Yasogami High. And there could have been even more if, again, we weren't involved. Mr. Morooka was known for his strict teaching methods and is said to have had constant friction with his students. The police will be pursuing this line of inquiry and are planning to begin a large-scale investigation tomorrow. We now turn to our reporter at the scene for more details. Dad won't be coming home again today. Uh, he's probably going to be busy for a little while now. 
But at least this means we get to spend more time with her ourselves. I actually think I know how this one works. It moved. Hey, how did you do that? Tell me, tell me. It's always nice hearing Nanako cheer up. And this crazy day is still not over. Welcome. It's been quite some time. Yes, it has. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. How are things proceeding? Well, uh, not well. Are you gradually drawing nearer to a solution to the mystery? Not really. Indeed. The fog clouding your path is thick. The season has changed, but your future is not yet closed. In time, a path will open to you. Our true reason for calling you here tonight is to provide a new form of assistance to help you achieve just that. Fusing personas. Have you been using our services diligently? I'd like to say I have. The aid we will henceforth provide is an advanced form of fusion. I speak of the power to fuse four or more personas at once. Don't get too excited though. This isn't like something you can do with just any personas. It's limited only to very specific recipes. I am quite certain that this will enable you to command even stronger powers. Some of the personas you can get out of these are very good though. Now, your journey will soon reach its climax. And as a result, many challenges, which I cannot foresee at present, await you. Most interesting. <laughs> well. Until we meet again, farewell. And Marie was in that scene, but she didn't talk because this scene was part of the original game and Marie obviously wasn't. <laughs>